get high so I can get low I'm Jack Sparrow when I smoke go Any way that the wind blows What's going on guys, it's Jay I've got a really good uh, video for you guys today uh, Basically what I'm going to be doing is we're teaching you how to make a 2D logo in Photoshop uh, super easy uh, Probably like the easiest method to do it but with the best effects that you can get out of it so without further ado let's get into it so go file press new I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible by the way because I just recorded this and it was 24 minutes long and I seriously have to like speed this up uh, so change the settings to what's here you can pause the video just change the width to 2000 height to 2000 resolution to 72 and background contents to transparent everything else should be default correct so we've got a square here and you'll have a layer. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to the paint bucket tool over here and you want to go to the colors up here. There's, you know, there's two colors. Click the one on the top left and then change it to white. You'll notice white because it's all left on the bottom here and then just click and this creates a white background. Then what I want you to do is take the brush tool right here, change the color to black either in this section here or up here and what I want you to do is I want you to zoom in right into the middle so to make sure I'm in the middle, I'm going to press Ctrl T on this layer and this will place a point right there but we want to make sure that we're getting it really accurate so what we need to do is on your, on your keyboard hold Ctrl and then press the plus key on your number pad that will just keep pressing the plus key while holding Ctrl and this will zoom you all the way in then press the tick button at the top and make sure you, your paintbrush tool is on 10 pixels by a 100 uh, hardness, 100% and just place the dot somewhere in the middle. That's probably close enough. And this is the point where it shows where our middle is, which we will, we will be rotating literally everything around it. And to do that, what we need to do is we want to create a uh, base curve, which will essentially work around as we do with four rotations of it to make sort of like a ninja star effect. Uh, here's an example right here. Uh, we've got a curve, you know, etc. And then we add stuff to it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's another example. They're all very similar, to be honest. Uh, but you can create some really cool effects depending on your curve, and this is the most important part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the pencil basics. So you're going to click the pencil here. Make sure you're on a new layer, not the white layer. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click. This creates my first point. I'm going to create another point. I'm going to hold shift because I want it to be a straight line. So hold shift. And as you can see, that's 100% straight. That's really cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this, this upwards. I'm going to make this fairly small and, and then enlarge it later on. So I'm going to click here. But I'm going to hold left click this time. And while holding left click, if I drag, I can create a curve. So I'm going to create a slight curve like here. And that looks fairly good. You can't see it all, but that's just Photoshop. Now what I want to do now is I want it to come back right down here. Unfortunately, I can't really do that. Um, because when I do that, it like curves around. So before I do that, I want to hold ALT on my keyboard, click this black dot here and that will get rid of a tangent. So if I pull it down here, there will be no like curve coming around. So I'm going to create uh, another curve, uh, probably around here. That's about as curvy as I want it, that's pretty, pretty decent. I'm going to make it have a bit of a hook on the end, so I'm going to curve it. Notice how I did the ALT thing again curve it, make it fairly big this time, alt it again and then what I'm going to do is going to take it all the way back up and create sort of a spiky effect sort of, so put this curve back to here, maybe a bit higher and then I'm going to take it all the way up here, you may want to go off the screen if you have run out of room, I often do because I can't measure <laughs> uh, and then Make it a tangent, make it match with your thing, make it look right basically. This will take uh, quite a few attempts, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I usually do around 10 attempts before I get a really really good curve. So I'm under a lot of pressure to get it right. Um, but this is actually looking fairly decent right now. So I'll click it and I'm going to join the points again. again. Obviously your curve can be completely different to mine. You just want it to look like a pretty, pretty decent curve. Make it change direction a few times. Don't make it so it's uh, always a spike. Kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, but I think this one's actually going to turn out really good. As you can see mine's gone off the screen and we don't really want that. So just click this little movement tool here. And then press Ctrl T on your T keyboard. And this will make it so you can move it around. 
I'm going to scale it down a little bit and I'm going to rotate it on this side because I usually like to do it on that side instead. And I'm going to move it somewhere on my composition which I think it would look pretty good. And remember we're going to be rotating this all the way around here. So I'm going to keep just, uh, just moving it around a little. Obviously you can change everything, you can make it thicker like that if you preferred it to be thicker. So I'm going to do it like, like that and I'm going to... I think that could work. That could, that could work right there. Uh, so yeah, then you know I'll take the pen tool again. I'm going to make it a solid shape because right now this is not actually a shape. It won't show up if you save it as a PNG. Right click it and press full path. Change the use to color and make sure it's on black. And then click OK. Then press delete on your keyboard to get rid of the path. And finally what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this around four axes. So I'm going to click the layer 2, which is the layer which you should have your curve on. On my keyboard I'm going to press Ctrl J and I'm going to press Ctrl T. This means that I've duplicated it and now I can move the duplicate. So as you see there's this little dot in the middle, I'm going to move this little dot on top of the black dot which I made earlier. You want to make it as in the middle of that black dot as possible because that's, that's where we'll be rotating it around. And if you have it too far over to the left, it won't quite look right and your composition will mess up slightly. So that's given us a fairly good view of how our composition will look once it's as four. But what I'm thinking is I sort of want this bit to connect slightly more. So to fix that, I'm just going to delete this. I'm going to move this further inwards to around there. Okay, do the same again, try again. This is obviously a trial and error kind of thing. And obviously you have to keep um, doing it. Uh, but I'm going to try and make this video as short as possible, so I'm not going to trial and error it too often, etc. And that looks much better. As you can see, it's actually joined, etc. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that result. So then I'm going to click the top layer. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard, click the bottom layer. And that will mean I've selected both of them. I'm going to press Ctrl J. And then Ctrl T, once again, same as we have done every single time that we've done this. And you'll find this across the whole logo stage that you'll have to do this. I'm going to move the anchor to the middle again. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. You'll know it's 180 degrees because it'll, be, it'll say 0 or 180. And that actually looks fairly cool. I'm fairly happy with that result. Uh, I did notice a few abnormalities right here. So I'm just going to move uh, each one slightly inwards. You can see that one's fixed. Control T them and just just um usually use your arrow keys on your keyboard and that will push them down into the right position. Because I don't really want that hold there, that looks kind of shabby. And obviously you don't want a bit of an abnormality in your uh, logo. Just press keep pressing control T if you get issues like this. But hopefully, hopefully, your logo won't have uh, those kind of issues like I have. So this is looking fairly good for a sort of like a first attempt kind of thing. I'm fairly happy with it, although I have noticed another one. I'm fairly happy with this one. Uh, obviously, you'll probably take a few attempts to get a really, really good effect. Uh, but now we're going to be start adding stuff that I like to call clips. So I'm just going to create a new folder down here. I'm going to put label it main by double clicking it and type in. And I'm going to put all of these pieces in there. Okay, now I'm going to create a new layer, make sure it's not in that folder, and basically I'm going to create clips, this makes it more 3D, so what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to show you this, these are the little tiny things around the edges which make it look more 3D. So I'm going to create one and then I'm going to go to speed art just to show you guys how it will look. So I'm basically what you're going to do is you're all going to do it all on one side, so I'm going to choose the left side or anti-clockwise. So I'm going to do one here, I'm going to do one here, I'm going to do one here, and I'm going to do one, no, I'm going to do one here. So, all on the left side, because if you had it on both sides, then it would cause complications and it wouldn't really look 3D-ish anyways. So I'm going to take the pen tool again, make sure I'm on my new layer, and I'm just going to do one and then I'm going to speed out this whole thing, just to make it much quicker for you guys. Just click here, I'm going to click here, so it sort of follows the path, and I'm going to stretch it using the control, no, the control, the left click, just make it so it follows this line here without touching it. Come on, click it and I'm going to bring it back together. Just, oops, is it going to respond at any point? There we go. Let me drag it so it's a bit thinner. Maybe like that. That looks okay, I suppose. Let's do it a bit thicker, but like that. 
that is perfect, fill path, enter, and then press delete. And there you go, we've got one of our sides. I'm going to do exactly the same as before. I'm going to press Ctrl J on it. When you're selecting the layer, move the anchor to the middle point. Zoom in if you need to, to move it onto the dot. And then you're going to, uh, going to want to sort of rotate it round. So I'm going to select both layers again, Control J, and then press Control T. I'm hoping you guys have sort of got this now, because uh, basically this is the way that it works the whole way around. You'll, it's all symmetrical, so you'll be doing that Control J, Control T, duplicating and editing thing the whole way around. And as you can see, it's sort of created a cool effect, but obviously it's not on these little things here. So I'm just going to stop the recording here, and then do a little speed art showing you guys how I did it, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah, some days I feel unfazed, like when I'm with my friends with a cup raise. And on Monday, I got a gun raise, suicidal do a die until hump day. Then I go right back at it like an automatic. More drinks, more songs, more beats to rap. I need a shrink, I'm gone, more time keeps passing. So that's all my clips done. I think uh, I got them all. Uh, basically, as you can see, I've done them all on the anti-clockwise side, so if I do it so it's sort of going that way, so one on the left side, left side, left side, etc. Sort of like a shadow, but not exactly a shadow, so it's um, sort of a, a, an effect without... Uh, a manual effect, that's what I'd call it, to be honest. But anyways, now, now what I'm going to be creating is something I like to call fillers. So I'm going to create a new group, I'm going to call it fillers, I'm going to create a new layer. And this is done exactly the same way, but uh, without, the, as you can see, these are very thin sheets to add sort of as shadows and effects. But as you can see, there are sort of like some white um, parts of the logo which seem to be fairly bare at the moment, which I may want to fill with more solid shapes, more wider shapes. So I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to go pen tool, I'm going to do pretty much the same as I did with the clips, but essentially much thicker. I'm going to do one for you guys, and then I'm going to go and do another speed art, and you guys can see how I did this. And then, there you go. So it, it sort of follows the line of everything else, and I'm just going to press fill path, enter, then press delete, and then we've got a fairly decent shape right there. So I'm going to duplicate by pressing Ctrl J, then Ctrl T. And do it exactly the same as we've done the whole time. It's very repetitive, as you probably can see. And then duplicate the whole way around. Duplicate two of them. Control J, Control T. It's really simple to be honest. I don't. I don't really know how people don't know how to make these as well. But. Um, as you can see, that sort of filled it out much better. If I wanted to, I could also fill out these layers, but I'm not actually going to do that. That seems like fairly, fairly filled out, and I don't want to make it too crowded. But the final thing on this thing is I'm going to add a middle. So I'm going to create a new uh, folder called middle. And obviously, you don't have to do this. You can just create it as layers, but it just makes it much easier to find it later on. So onto that layer, and what I usually do is I get my pen tool. I do very similar as before, I'm going to click in like the corner here, and the corner here, and then create like a, like a, an oval bend, as you say, and then just alt click that point, and then click the other point, join it together, actually that's, that's, uh, that's fairly off I think, let me start that again, because that, that was just a fail, uh, create like a box, Alt click it, join them together, and create sort of like an oval effect because you don't want it to be completely square, that's sort of boring. Make it so it's a bit more interesting. Uh, fill it out, then press delete, and there you go, you've got one of the points. Do exactly the same as we've done before. Very much of a, a pattern here, as you'll be able to tell at the end of this video. Exactly the same, select both, control J, control T. Move the anchor to the middle and just rotate it 180 degrees. And now that is pretty much it, guys. That is essentially done. I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. Uh, the only other step uh, that we've sort of got to do is, oops, I've created that, uh, is 
getting rid of this little black dot, you can keep it if you want to, but it just goes to the layer that we made, so the completely white layer, you'll be able to see it. Uh, get your brush tool, set the colour as white, and then just, just colour it in, white, and that's pretty much gone now. And you've got a really sexy logo, which I am actually fairly happy with, considering it's a second attempt. <laughs> um, so now you, all you can do is press save, you can save it as a PSD, so I'm going to enable it, I'm going to enable whatever. Make sure it's set to PSD, Photoshop, PSD, press save, and that saves this composition. And then you can press save as once you're completely done with it, change it to PNG, and then you click save. And there we have it guys, that is how to create a logo. Really happy with the way it's turned out, I hope you guys have enjoyed, I hope this helps you. If you found this difficult to follow, you can also buy a logo from my shop. Selfie description in uh, selfie in the description, uh, or you can just pay directly through PayPal, I'll be on Skype for that email. Um, really appreciate any sales, I'm currently saving up for something, so definitely looking for sales right now. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed, I definitely enjoyed making it, uh, I hope this wasn't too long for you guys, I, I know I speak quite a lot, uh, but anyways, peace.